and good morning everyone welcome to another full compass full access webinar where we give you full access to the industry experts to talk about the subjects that you get to pick and today man do we have an industry expert for you we have uh you see the gentleman above me there uh blake angelos he's the synthesizer product specialist from Yamaha to talk about the YC keyboards from Yamaha. And I think we're going to just kick things off uh, and we're going to go right in. Oh, I suppose I should introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jim Rip. I'm the manager of technical training and sales development here at Full Compass Systems coming to you from Studio One here in Madison, Wisconsin. And I am just going to kick things off and, and have Blake start Start with, uh, he's going to play a song for us uh, that shows you, goes through all the features of the YC keyboards. So go ahead, Blake, take it away. Hi, this is Blake Angelos from Yamaha Synthesizers here at Full Compass Systems with the YC Series Stage Keyboards. Now, before I get into the details on this awesome instrument right here, I'm going to play a little tune out front. The backing track, you're going to hear the drums, the bass, the guitars, and the horn sections. Those were all created using the Montage Music Synthesizer. But all of the key parts that I recorded and the key parts that I'm going to play over the top um, are all coming from the YC88 right here. So check it out.
thing that's cool about the YC series is that it's pretty easy to figure out what's going on by just taking a look at this cool front panel. So let's take a look at the cool front panel. You have a dedicated organ section right here. You have this switch that turns on that section. So when I turn on that switch, that means that section is active. So now the organ section's on, now it's off. Organ section is very cool. I'll go over that in a little bit greater detail, but you have your draw bars right here, percussion, vibrato, chorus, upper and lower manuals, rotary speaker control that controls the rotary speaker effect that's actually over here, but you have the controls right there where you'd expect them to be since rotary speaker is a pretty important part of the organ, right? So organ section right here. I'll come back to the live set right here. You have two dedicated keys section, keys A and keys B. Each of these has a selection of these sounds that are right here. Piano, electric piano, synth sounds, and other sounds, which would be like brass sections, string sections, and so on. You can set these two on. So right now I have them both on right here. There's a layer section right here. Piano and strings, right? Or if I just want just the piano, I just switch that section off. There, done. So very easy to kind of figure that out. You'll notice that as I turn on a key section, if I have A section, keys A is right here, there are two effects for each of the keys. So keys A here, when I turn on the B switch, it'll switch it to this, so keys B, and you have another, two other effects right here. So two separate effects for the keys section, for keys A and keys B, two insertion effects. Very cool. Um, moving right along. This is what I call the utility effect. Why is it the utility effect? Because you have basically, you can route it to where you need it. Um, there are 32 different effects in all of these effect areas in here, in these two insertion effects and that effect. So 32 different effects, things like phasers, flangers, um, choruses, delays. There's also some more esoteric things like, like um, lo-fi or slicer. So there's some cool ones in there as well that just do some kind of cool special effect kinds of things. But the idea of this effect here is that I can route it to where I need it. So let's say I want to have a chorus effect, which is what's selected here, and I want to route that to my organ. So now I have a, a separate chorus effect in addition to the rotary speaker or however it's routed over here. Or let's say I would like to have a harmonic enhancer effect added, added to keys B. So I set it to keys B, now it's harmonic enhancer. And you have these basic um, controls right here for rate and depth, very easy to get around. Again. That's what I love about the interface. You basically look at it and you can, you can get an idea of what's going on. That I turn that switch on, it turns on that effect. Lastly, you have these um, three areas here. One of them is the speaker amp section. There is rotary A and rotary B. So there's two rotary speaker effects in this instrument. Rotary A is a simple rotary speaker. Rotary B would be more like a rotary speaker with a transistor preamp in front of it. So it's great for rock. So different rotary speaker effects. Three different types of amplifier simulators, lead, crunch, and double. They're just different uses. The lead is more of a cutting distortion effect. The crunch and double are a little bit more comping, but they're distortion effects. They have a little bit more body in the low and low mids. And then finally, the case effect. This actually simulates the um, preamplifier and um, speaker system of a vintage electric piano. So when you have something like a vintage electric piano in here and you want to have a little bit more of that sound that um, that people love, that vintage electric piano sound, I would route it through that case effect and adjust it right there. In fact, I think on the, the tune that I played, I used the case effect and I have the drive control on that one turned up quite a bit. So I have this overdriven um, tying electric piano that I played in that in the in the tune I just played. So very, very cool in here. You have reverb right here. When I have all of these um, button or all of these lights are illuminated and I turn the reverb, I'm turning up the reverb for all the sections simultaneously. But what if I want to have separate sends for reverb for each one? So maybe the organ, I don't want any reverb at all send to the organ, but on the keys A, I do want quite a lot of reverb there. And keys B, I want maybe just you can split the difference in there. So now check it out. As I move through organ, that has no effect. Sorry, organ is right here. Organ, no effect. Keys A, a little bit more effect, right? Keys B is the split the difference one. So different effect sense. Or if I just want them all to have the same, have them all illuminated, grab it, boom, you've set 
all the reverb sends for all the sections simultaneously. And then finally over here is the Master EQ. Master EQ, it's not saved with a live set, so I use the Master EQ for the rooms that I'm in, especially on a stage. Sometimes you have a really big, boomy room that you're in. You want to, when things like that, things get a little, um, uh, you know, your definition goes away. So you want to maybe roll some of those low ends out. So I just turn it here, roll the low end, maybe increase the high end so it cuts a little bit more in a bigger room. Um, conversely, let's say I'm in a smaller room and I want a little bit more low end. Well, I could go right here, turn the low up right here, um, adjust the mid frequency and mid range. So you have mid range um, uh, increase by volume right here, and then you can change the frequency right here. So you have a sweepable mid right here. Grab it, maybe low in, you know, turn it up here, or if I want to cut that low mid, cut it this way. Anyway, that EQ is very cool for live rooms where you can adjust the sound of your instrument based on the room that you're in. So that's a very basic overview of the front panel. Last thing I will cover before I move on is what is this live set area, since I have it um, dialed in here. What the live set is, this saves my front panel settings. So let's say I'm in here and I have this on, turn on my Oregon, have my drawbar settings like this, uh, turn on this effect here, I'll just turn everybody on here. Okay, here's a sound I just created. I wanna store that into a live set area and I'll just store it into one that I'm not using currently. Um, here's one right here. So I can now, I just recall the live set, store to this right here is what I was trying to do, just like that. So turn something on here, I'll restore it again so you can see it. So I have it now with all the sections on, store that live set, move to another one here, instant recall with one button, that's what a live set is. It just recalls your front panel settings as you have them set up, very cool. So we go back here to my first, um, page here. Now you notice that I'm moving to pages. So there are 20 pages, there's 20 and there's one, of eight live sets a piece and you move through them by banks. The cool thing about the live set is if I have a sound like this one and here, right, and I go to this new sound here and I select something like this, do you hear the piano still ringing through? But I did change to an electric piano. So you can seamlessly switch between live sets. This is a very cool thing about this instrument. It's really great for, let's say, you're, um, you're playing a service and you have a nice pad that's playing and then you're gonna switch to another song and you wanna play a piano thing but you want that pad to hold all the way through for when you start that song. That's what seamless sound switching allows you to do. Hold that pad, switch to another sound, and seamlessly move to the next sound without cutting off the previous sound. Seamless sound switching. Pretty cool. So that's there's your overview of the front panel. Now I'd like to play through some of the sounds in here. Um, first off, I just want to play you through the acoustic pianos. First up is probably my biggest go-to piano. CFX is our nine foot concert grand. Um, it is a, just a gorgeous piano. It has a very pure sound to it, um, very even across the board. Gorgeous, um, low um, uh, velocity layer. So when you play soft, it's just a beautiful sound. But when it gets big, it has a nice big nine foot concert grand sound to it but it's still very even across the board. CFX, that's the main piano to me that I use most of the time for a concert grand. Right next to it though is my second favorite one, maybe sometimes my first favorite one, which is the C7. So C7 is a seven foot six inch soundboard. C7 is probably the most recorded piano in the history of piano, of, of recorded instruments at least. And the reason why I think the C7 is such a popular instrument in recording studios is that it has a, it, it really is easy to mix. It has a very strong, um, bright sound. And the thing I love about this particular C7 is that it still has that gorgeous soft layer when you play it. But this particular C7 really has a nice cut to it. So if you're playing gospel,
Mm. It really cuts nicely. So it's a great piano when you really need a nice cutting piano, but it still has that gorgeous um, soft level as well. Next to that one, the C or, or the S700. Now the S700 was a piano that we initially released with the S90ES back in the early 2000s, and it was such a popular piano. You know, lots of studio and stage musicians in um, uh, Nashville, New York, LA really love that sound, that S90 ES S700 sound. Well, we 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 kind of moved away from it for a while, and then we brought it back with this instrument because so many people really wanted us to bring this piano back. So we redid a version for the new YC series. It's also in the CP series as well. But again, this is a really nice even piano as well. It doesn't have the cut like the C7, but it has this nice enveloping quality to it, I guess is the best way to but it's not as, as big as the CFX as well. So it's just a nice, um, great piano, especially for comping. I love it for comping behind a band or whatever. So that's the S700. Um, we have two new pianos that we released with OS version 1.1. Now, at the beginning, I talked about that. Uh, YC has OS updates that happen regularly that add new sounds and um, new features. So there are two acoustic pianos we released with that OS 1.1, and one of them is just this live CF3. This is the piano from the CP300, a very popular stage piano from us. The thing about the CP300, though, is it's pretty heavy because it has built-in speakers and it's just a boxier instrument. So for a lighter weight stage piano, um, having this in that instrument is something that was requested by a lot of people that really just dig this piano. And this is a nice bright piano. It's great for a stage. So I can see why people would like that CF3. And then, you know, you get used to a piano sound and then you don't have it. Yeah, well, we brought it back for all you people that have CP300s that don't want to break your back moving it around anymore. So we added the live CF3 in OS 1.1. Another piano that we added is this one right here. So this is the Nashville C3. Now, this is a very interesting piano. For one thing, you'll notice that it has a very... I guess we could say played in quality. So when they showed up at the recording studio, they just started recording it in the state that it was in, which is, a, you know, probably had just gotten done in a recording session. This was actually um, recorded in our Yamaha Artists um, studio in Nashville, Tennessee, that we own this really cool recording studio. And this is the piano that's in there. But the thing that's cool about this, the, how they recorded this, they recorded it using a tape-based system, so it has this cool organic quality, I guess, is what I'd, I'd like to say. It's great for country, definitely, because you can... You know, all those... That kind of stuff sound really great with this piano. That or just... music. This piano has just this vibe to it. It sounds really great in stereo. I hear the, the imaging really nicely in these headphones. So that's the Nashville C3. It's a, it's a specific piano for a specific type of a sound, but when you need that sound, that's the piano you'd want to use. Same thing with this U1 I'm about to play. So this is an upright piano. So it has a totally different sound, especially in the low end, because it's an upright piano. U1's a 48-inch upright. It's not a giant nine-foot soundboard. So it has a different sound to it as well. Again, when the type of music that requires a piano like this, there is no other piano that's going to work. That's why we put this piano. We want to give you options for different types of music. Because a lot of people are like, why would you put, when, it, when you could just have a nine-foot concert grand all the time? Because maybe you don't want a nine-foot concert grand all the time. Maybe you don't want, uh, maybe you want a, a, a smaller soundboard piano that has a played-in sound like that Nashville. That's why we added different pianos. They don't always have to be completely pristine pianos. For different types of production, sometimes you do want something like this. Especially something like the you know uh, a, a, 
this U1 sound, when you, when you add it with some of these effects in here, and it's so easy to find different effects in here. Let me just grab one that's like a, um, a chorus effect. So this sound here. Maybe adjust the rate. I love this about this instrument, by the way. Notice I just engaged the chorus effect. It's right on the front panel here, and I'm adjusting depth and rate right here with two dedicated knobs. I'm not going into some menu to do this. If I don't like that particular chorus, I'll grab a different one. Here's a different one. Maybe I like that one. Oh, I like that one. Save it into a live set for recall later. Fast. That's the idea of a stage keyboard, is having the ability to create different sounds, add different things, do this production live, basically, but without having to jump into a menu to do all that. Very cool. Anyway, U1. Um, I'll just, there's just a couple more right here that I have in here just to point out something. Um, so there's one sound here that's called piano and synth. So this is a single sound that has a, a, a layer already in it. So let's say I wanted to have a layered piano synth sound, but I want to have it split with a bass. This is where I'd use this sound because it's, it's really easy just to do a quick layer. Just turn on the second keys section here, keys B, now I have it. And the benefit of doing it this way is that I have independent control over how loud or soft that key, that, that pad is in here. But then we also have some of those sounds that have the pad um, built in in a single sound. Piano strings, piano synth. That's the piano section. Let's take a move over to this section right here, the organ section. Well, I love... <laughs> I love the VCM organ in this instrument. It, 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 they really did such a great job with the modeling of the organ coupled with the rotary speaker effect. So, so the organ section is also, it's, it's, um, it's correct. How's that? You see things that are very um, specific to vintage drawbar organs. For example, vibrato and chorus, three different types of vibrato chorus. Um, percussion, second and third percussion, slow and fast, normal, soft, on, off. Percussion works just like those vintage drawbar organs. And of course, rotary speakers right here. And I can control that. Rotary speaker is actually, it's in this section here, but you have the control here. You might have noticed earlier too, see how I'm changing the rotary speaker right here? That's because I have an FC5 foot switch, so you can assign that to a foot switch so you don't have to pull your hands off. So if you're playing... See, I'm changing the rotary speaker speed without touching the... And this one I have upper lower manual and it's split. There's the split point right here. To set a split point, again, this is that one-to-one -one interface. I just touch it, right? There it is. It's set. Now I'm back to my sound here. And with this one for the, for the, the lower manual, you could set it for kicking bass so I could have a bass sound. In this case, I have more of a comp sound, so... I have a little bit of a chorus, one selected on this lower manual. You don't get percussion on lower manual, like a vintage drawbar organ kind of is this way. The upper manual has the, the percussion set right here. So I have this uh, as an organ for, if I'm comping and there's a bass player, so I'm not playing the bass on here. So that's one way to use the organ section in here. I should talk about the different uh, types of organ. There's actually six different organs in here. Three H models and three F models. The H models, H1, H2, H3, are three different types of vintage draw bar. This H1 is more like the studio quality, perfect. Right? Right next to that is H2. This one has a little bit more of character to it. It's been played, and it's more like a club organ. And it has a different harmonic characteristic entirely to me, too. I really like the H2. In fact, I used the H2 in that song I played at the beginning. There's just a certain quality to it that I just really dig. Um, lastly is the H3. This is more like the rock organ. It has a very, it's like a, uh, an organ that's been customized. It has a very specific uh, percussion sound to it. Just a little, little, little different 
harmonic characteristic, and I really like it because of that percussion sound. In this case, I'm also using the rotary B. Before you've been listening, rotary B is, is a larger rotary speaker um, model that also has a transistor preamp, and I don't have a lot of drive in here, but if I wanted to add, like maybe pull down some of these. A lot more drive, great for rock organs um, when you pull those draw bars down. Pretty, pretty slick right there. Let's just, you know, before I move on to, from, the, from this organ section, I want to point out some cool things about what you can do with this organ section. So we'll go back to this H1 model here. And, and now I'm going to show you a little bit of editing. This is, this is where the only editing that really exists in here is, is this editing um, that I'm going to show you here. But I want to show it specifically with customizing organs. I think it's a it's an important thing that people need to know about. So I'm going to go in here to settings and sound, and I'll go to organ settings, and you can see what I can change in here. So we'll just focus right now on the organ section right here, and I'll adjust some things. Leak level is one of them. Leakage between the components that make the sound. So you get this harmonic characteristic, and you can increase that or decrease that. So I'll start with it very low. Right? Now I'll increase the leak level, and you'll hear these harmonics sort of creep in as I increase it. Hear them there? That. It's that that's in the top. So I'm increasing that. Now this particular um, H1 doesn't have a whole lot of leak to it. Like if I change it to H2, and I can just do that by switching it right here. That H2 has totally different leak. So that's leak 127 H2. Way more leakage as opposed to H1, not as pronounced. One of them is more of a studio, that's the H1. The other one's more of kind of a, a stage, sitting in a club. So, it, so that H2 definitely has a lot more, a lot more ah, in it, which is something I really like for a certain sound, definitely. So leak level is one thing you can change. Let me go back to that so it's not all at 127. Um, you also have key click. Key click is another sound. Let me take off percussion. So it does, it's just that little clicky sound in the very initial attack. All the way up. Again, the H1 doesn't have a huge range with that one, but the H2, you can really hear the difference in the key click. Which is that... No key click. There's still a little bit of leakage in there. So key click, you can edit that sound as well. Um, so those are the main ones that I want to talk about. The other thing that's very important to an organ sound is the... Um, the rotary speaker. And what can you edit with the rotary speaker? Well, quite a lot. First of all, I definitely want to show you this cool one here, just background noise. So it's there, but let me turn it up way loud. So that's a lot of background noise. And check it out. It simulates the actual physical sound of that rotary speaker moving. Speeding it up. Slowing it down. Stopping it. And you can hear it stop. Speed up again. Now, I like some of that in the sound, and you can see in the screen right there, it shows you what it's been programmed at. So 79 is where the, uh, the, the programmed level that I've saved in the live set is. And that's, it's there still, but it's not like in your face. Like, But it really adds to the authenticity. Now, some other things about the rotary speaker in here is the level of the horn and the rotor. So there are two parts of a rotary speaker system. There's a horn and there's a rotor. The rotor is the lower frequency, the horn is the upper frequency, or the, the high frequencies. You can adjust the level between those two. Now I have mine here actually with the horn rolled off, so I don't want to want, didn't want a lot of high end on this sound here. But check it out as I turn up the horn level. There's a lot more high end now. But notice that I, when I roll it back, those high ends roll out. Um, so the other 
piece of this is the rotor. Now I have a little bit more rotor in this one. So this organ, I've kind of thought about it being a little bit more of a comping sort of an organ. So it's not really cutting through. It's more of a supportive role. So I adjusted it accordingly. Really important if you want to get the right organ sound out of this instrument is experiment with this. Find that. A lot of people have a lot of, of opinions about how that's supposed to sound. Well, you can adjust it right there with horn and rotor level. Another thing that, that um, the last thing I'll just show here is just the speed of the, of the rotary speaker. Some people have an idea that all rotary speakers have the same slow and fast speed. Well, they don't. It's a, it's a mechanical instrument or, 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 a, or a, a mechanical process or mechanical mechanism, <laughs> whatever I'm trying to say. You know what I'm trying to say. So if you want the, the, the speed of the, of the rotary speaker to be a little faster when it's slower, we'll just adjust it here. You can adjust it via RPM right here. Again, it shows you what it's programmed at. And you also you have rotor, rotor and horn, slow and fast, because there's two different motors for each of those. And then you have the fast speed that you can turn up so it's way faster or something where it's set right here, which is 333. So you can really do some customization to the organs in this instrument. Just wanted to point that out before moving along to other, other sounds in this instrument. Um, now, let's move to the F organ. So I talked about everything that you just heard, saw me talk about there, here and saw me talk about, was the H model, the vintage drawbar organs. Well, we also have eight operator FM synthesis in this instrument as well. So that's what these F models are about. There are three types in this one. F1 is a pure sine wave organ. It actually has a vintage quality, especially when you use it with the, um, the rotary speaker. You know, I just love how this sounds. I use it a lot, especially for pad sounds, where it has the quality of that vintage drawbar, but it's not exactly that sound. The other thing that's cool about this is that it has a pure low end. So it doesn't have that fold back thing. I'll go back and maybe show that to you in a second. It's a pure low end all the way through. So I love the low end of this. That's an FM synthesis, FM organ. Really one of my favorite organs in this instrument is that F1 organ, just for exactly what I just played, that patty, gospely kind of sound in here. So that's the F model organ. Now, with this, you don't have the ninth draw bar. This is eight operators, so you have eight of them in here, but you can pull them down so they get that sound. I have it kind of in this classic setup right here. In fact, I think I'm just modeling the draw bars right here, <laughs> see, kind of sort of like I'm copying the shirt. And I have upper and lower manual on this one as well. This one's kind of more of a, of a low end kind of a thing. So for a bass. Anyway, F1 organ, sine wave organ, has this cool vintage-y kind of thing to it. Now the next two, F2 and F3, simulate different types of transistor um, organs from the 60s. So one of them is more like that English style, which is kind of more of like a pulse wave. So it has a, uh, uh, a mellower sort of a tone to it. Um, and then the other one is this one, the F3. This is more like that Italian style. So it has a little bit more of a sawtooth wave. It's a brighter, brassier sound. So check it out. I'll just play something that's sort of 60s-ish. <laughs> So that's the British version. Now, here's the Italian version. Hear the difference? Mellower sound, brassier sound. So two different combo organs. When you're playing any of that kind of music, no other thing will work. It really has to have that sound. So you can hear as I pull up the different live sets that I have in here, how you know that has a whole lot of the background noise again all of these these things that i showed you the rotary speaker edits the um the organ edits all that stuff is available to you to save into the live set for instant instant recall so there you go now 
I'm moving along from the organ section to the keys section. Just want to play through some of the electric pianos that are in this instrument because there's tons of them in here. Play through some of the tiny ones. The 78 RD. This one's very cool. Let me just get my... Make sure my volume's up. So 78 RD is kind of like your... Your um, a vintage electric piano, but kind of a later model one. It has a very nice. Nice attack, I must say. Now, what, since I'm in this sound here, you have two effects per key section in here. Right now, I just have CO. That's a compressor. So I have a compressor on here. And you'll hear when I turn it off, the, the, the level changes a little bit because that's what the compressor is doing. It's, it's bringing the, my louds get or my softs get louder and my louds get softer. That's basically what the compressor's doing. Fine control over dynamics. Now check this out, I have a second effect right here that I can engage pretty quickly, and there is your... your VCM phaser, phaser two. This one is the, the small phaser. There's a few other phasers in here as well, and again, you have depth and rate controls really quick, so if I want a little bit maybe a little faster phase shift, a little bit more depth. Maybe not as fast. Less depth, really fast. Oh, that's the sound I like. Store, boom, instantly recall. In fact, I'll just do it right now. That's how fast it is to store in this instrument. I have now stored exactly that. So if I move to another sound, come back, the phaser is set exactly where I set it. Again, one-to-one -one interface, fast, not a lot of menu diving. You saw uh, the most menu diving you'll ever see is things like when you're editing specific things, but for the things that you need on the gig, that's what I love about this instrument. It's instantly recallable. So moving right along, that was the 78 RD. Next to it is a totally different one, 73 RD. This one has a darker sound. This is more like an older model of the vintage Tyne piano. It's probably the one that I use the most, but again, that's whatever your opinion is. If you like a brighter one, well, that's what's great about this 78. But moving right along, I have some of the new ones that we added in OS version 1.1. We had actually two new electric pianos to this, time pianos. One of them is 73 RD Studio. This one has that very bell-like quality. This one's totally... I mean, check it out compared to the other 73 in here. Seamless sound switching. Here's the, here's the, the previous one. So, you know, vintage -y sound. Now here's the 73 RD Studio. Check out the difference. Way more bell-like top end quality to it. Really great for some of those 70s tunes that have that, that really prominent bell, you know. Bell-like quality. Okay, now what I did with this one, I just saved 73 and 74, the other one in keys B. If I switch them like this at the same time, boom. Now you're just hearing keys B. I just switched the other one off. See, pretty cool how that worked. Um, so this one's totally different. This one is. So the thing that's cool about the 74 RD stage, I know this particular model, it's a totally modified Tyne piano. Totally all the Tynes are, have been changed, the pickups are custom, the uh, preamp is custom, it's like a totally hot rotted Tyne piano. As opposed to the one, the 73 RD, that's more of a vintage, all original parts one, this one's more of a modified one, so it has, it has a definitely a lower end on it. It's got a really good bark in the low end. Again, that's, so, so those are ones that we added in version OS 1.1. Um, now I just want to briefly play through some of the other, so you have your time piano, right? Well, there's also the other type, the reed piano. The reed piano is that other type of vintage, check it out. Now I actually switched the octave on this one, see where the octave is set, minus one, I always forget right when I play it, it's like, oh yeah, because if you play some of those, 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 uh, Reed pianos, they kind of 
they play in this section, so I just move the octave down. So this is WR Warm. There's also, and I can switch it right here as well, WR Bright is just a brighter version. Right? And then the last one is WR Wide. This is actually the sound designer's personal. This kind of cuts right right between the dark and the bright. It's It's kind of the ideal one in a lot of ways, but again, that's up to you. Which one sounds the best? It doesn't matter what my taste is. It matters what your taste is. Fortunately, you have three different reed pianos that you can choose from to get to whatever sound you want, a darker, brighter, or something in between. Um, so some other things that are in here. In fact, I played the, the one at the beginning. I want to just point out the case effect applied to an electric piano. Now that tune that I played, I used this sound. We call it call it mean seventy free. It's that British sound. It's seventy free, right? Right. That's where I got the name. But mean because I have the case effect. Little bit of drive, high tone right here. But I have the tone control lower here, so I'm increasing the tone of the actual case. Um, speaker amp. Again, what is this simulating? The preamp and speaker of a vintage um, electric piano. I love how that sounds. That is that great overdriven tyne piano sound. So if I turn the drive down, that it goes away. See, it's, I need it up. Now I wouldn't use this maybe on a ballad. I use it on a solo thing, but that's why you have it here. There you go. Cool. That's the case effect applied here. One other thing that I wanted to show you. I have an FC7 down here. It is controlling this wah-wah effect, pedal wah. On a cloud sound. So... This is pretty cool. I would just want to show you very quickly how easy it is to set a controller to control something, okay? Right now, if I go to settings and I go to um, controllers, move my hand out of the way there, and I go to foot controller two, you'll notice if I go to assign, well, it's set to pedal wah, right? But let's say, for whatever reason, I want it to control, what do I want it to control? How about I, contr I want it to control the drive of the um, case effect that's applied here for, for whatever reason? How do I assign that to do that? Well, when you're in this area right here where you go to, in fact, I'll back up where I'm at. I went to settings and then I went to controllers and I went to foot controller too since that's the one we're looking at and I went to assign, okay? How do I assign drive to this? Well, what if I just move that drive? Huh. That's it. See? It's controlling drive now. Just that fast. Done. I like it. I just touch right here and I can save it to, or actually just touch the store, save it to the sound. Now it's controlling that effect if I were to save it in that, in that configuration. That's how you assign you know, controllers to do different things. I can assign. You can't really see it over here because I wanted to have a close-up kind of shot of the front panel here. But there's a... Uh, a uh, pitch bend lever and a modulation lever as well. Let's say I wanted to set that controller real quick. We'll do it real fast. The modulation lever to um, the same thing. How about just right here? So I just literally touch it. Now, see what it's doing? Now the modulate. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. What I really want to do is control the tone of that sound here. Boom. There it is right there. Just that fast. Super easy to to to. Again, that's the idea of a versatile stage keyboard that has a cool one-to-one -one interface is that I want to be able to get to things really fast and assign them and not have to go into page and page and page. You do have to do a little bit of menu diving, but that is the extent of menu diving in this instrument. So it's very cool in that regard. Um, last thing I need to show you. So there's definitely FM synthesis in this instrument. So that's an FM electric piano sound, the classic DX. 
There's some cool things about this I just want to show real quick here too. I'm going to go in here into the settings area, into sound. I'm going to go to the keys A settings. And I want to show you there's some cool little things that you can do with FM synthesis in here. Just basic stuff. One of them is just this thing called FM unison. So I'm going to turn it on first. Do you hear it sort of chorusing there? There's no effect on this, by the way, except a little reverb. So what the FM unison does is it gives you, it detunes the operators a little bit. And then you have another setting in here that's detune, right? So I can increase the amount of detune. So it, it adds a, a, this chorusing quality just using the detuning of the operators. And then you have this cool parameter that's called spread that if I go to, oops, moved a little fast there, FM unison spread. spreads them out across the stereo field, so you hear it kind of. Isn't that cool? But again, pure FM synthesis to do that. Um, it's, it's equally cool, let me move on to another live set here, for an FM lead sound. So a cool thing about this instrument, it has a mono mode with portamento. Again, highlighting that versatility of the YC series. But you can do the same thing with this guy as well. So I go in here to sound, um, the key A settings, FM unison, turn it on. Turn on detune. Turn on spread. That's pretty cool. So I, I can use FM unison for an electric piano sound, for a lead sound like this. If I turn on the second one here, two FM lead parts set an octave apart. You really come, and I haven't even talked about any of the effects. These have no effects. You can do a lot with this instrument. That's what I'm saying. That's the versatility of the YC series is in stuff just like this. So I'm coming in here to the home stretch here. I just want to play a few more sounds in here, just to, again, to highlight that versatility. Cool pad sounds. So you can hear what's happening here. So this one actually uses this reverse reverb sound. Check it out. That's what happens when you have the depth all the way up and the rate all the way up. See, if I turn it off, it's pretty instantaneous. Now, the other thing I'm using in here is the lo-fi effect. So I have a little bit of lo-fi-ness going on here. Let me disengage. You hear what? You can really get into it there and really just make it sound like an old... Remember those old computers from the... 70s and 80s, my first computer, I remember that one, kind of sound like this, the audio, that 8-bit sound kind of thing, coupled with the, the, the gated reaper effect, so that's one of the sounds, the other one is the analog pad here, so that's kind of doing the, the, the heavy lifting of the pad sound, right? Now I want to show you something that's really slick about um, how you can deal with analog pads. One of them is we have this cool EG and filter, single knob filter and EG. There are actually eight settings that, are, that you can get to inside the, um, the settings area here, but I'll just show you what they do. It's just a single knob if I want to have a little bit longer release or shorter release in this case, or short, shorter attack. And single knob filter. So rather than having both cutoff frequency and resonance on separate um, knobs, which is a little bit more to get around when you want, it, want something a little brighter, we give you the single filter knob that if you're just thinking, I just want this pad sound to be a little, a little darker, turn it down really fast, save it, done. Again, it's that one-to-one -one interface, speed. That's why we have a single knob to do that in here. And again, I could assign the mod slider very quickly to control that feature, as you saw earlier. Um, another thing that's cool in here is that I... Okay, this one has the touch wah, but there's another effect in here. You have that filter in here. There's another effect, and I'm going to get to in a second, that's called LP filter. So with the... 
So this is a this actually is cutoff frequency and resonance as an effect as well. So there's some cool synthesizer things that you can do with this instrument um, using some of the controls in here. Just wanted to go there for a second while I go to something like a killer brass sound. With filter control, right? Cool brass sounds, cool um, fat brass sound kind of things. That uses a slicer effect. Just switch to another sound. Seamless sound switching. This I just love, two different horn sections. So horn one, horn two, these are like French horn sections. great um, orchestral sounds in here. There's just a, a cool octave string. So I have two different string sections. <laughs> Tempo delay, hear that? What if my tune's this fast? One, two, three, four, there. So you have a tempo delay effect that's in this effect section over here that you can assign for exactly what I just did to have a tempo delay that you can quickly get to. Love that. Steel string acoustic guitar. This is cool because I like to show some of the ways you can combine sounds in here. Like for example, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on that keys B section. So it's a sine lead, so a lead sound. But I'm actually using this in this case as more of a pad sound. Right? Now check this out. Now I've turned on the FM organ here and I have just a little bit of draw bar edge in here um, and it just kind of is a cool sound. I don't know, I was just messing around one day and came up with this kind of a thing. See, it's in there, right? And that's that FM organ there. Again, I love that organ for its just, its uh, backgroundiness. Is that even a word? Um, so, you know, I think I'm kind of coming into to, to the, the home stretch here. Um, I just really love this instrument because of its versatility. It's really, really powerful. The last thing I'll show you, and I've done this on a few other videos you may have seen out there, but I definitely want to do one here just to highlight one last thing, and that's just this cool looper delay and how it works. You can create these cool looping um, uh, textures pretty easily with this uh, looper delay. And basically, what you can do is you can start the loop, and then as I touch the select button when I'm on LD, looper delay, you notice there's only two settings for this one. Either everybody gets the looper delay or they don't. That's it. But when I want to play over the top, I just pull myself out of the looper delay. Well, let's just see. You'll see what I'm talking about. So I can go and start something to play to first. Going through the looper delay. And it's just an organ percussion. Turn that down a little bit. Okay, so I'll turn off that section. Maybe add in this section here. Okay, got that one going. I'm doing something here with the OB breaths. And this one has the, the slicer sound in here. So if I go like this, it's got a cool... Okay, now, here's what's cool about it. 
So you notice that I have these, these guys going on here. Now I'm going to switch to an entirely different sound, still with the looper delay. It is in here. But because I've seen with sound switching, it will keep that looper in, in the buffer still, right? So I can add another loop to it if I want. So first of all, what I want to do before I get into playing over it is I'll add maybe this tubular bell sound in here. Now to do this, I put the depth and the rate all the way up. So I have... Let's try this one now. The volume pedal swelling in. Now, what I want to do is I want to play over that now. So I just turn off the effect here, pull it out. It's still there, but I just am out of the delay line now. Now I have my organ over here. Isn't that cool? That's the last thing I wanted to kind of just show you. Again, highlighting the versatility of this instrument and the things that you can do with the YC series. YC61, YC73, and YC88. One for an organist, one for a keyboardist, one for a discerning pianist. There you go, YC series. Um, last thing I just want to talk about very quickly you have USB audio and MIDI out on here. So when I played that song at the beginning, I used the USB connection to my computer and just played the file off of my computer. But again, I can play over that. So why is that cool? Well, one of them is backing tracks. As you saw, you can use a backing track. But what if you use something like Camelot or Mainstage and you use virtual instruments and you want to control virtual instruments? Well, because it's a MIDI and USB connection to the computer, you can not only play the virtual instrument using the MIDI part of it, but you can also monitor the virtual instrument as well. Um, and you can control how loud it's coming in. You can control it, obviously, from the computer. But check this out. If I go to Menu, General, I.O. Volume, USB Audio, there's my send from the computer. So if I'm playing, in fact, I'll just do that real fast since we're right here. Um, I'll just play my little backing track here. Oop. Oh, <laughs> I still have my, my, my loop going here. Hold on. Wait one moment. Let me just get out of here. It actually almost works with it, doesn't it? Anyway, that's funny how it works like that. Um, I.O. volume, USB volume. See, I'm controlling the volume of the playback, or I can turn it up here. Anyway, you get the idea. So the fact that it's a USB audio and MIDI interface um, allows you to play virtual instruments and hear them back or backing tracks. Just a cool little addition to this instrument. It's also iOS compatible. If you have a simple um, lightning to USB connector or if you use an iPad Pro, it would be the USB-C to um, USB connector. You can connect that way and use um, an iPhone or an iPad with this instrument audio and MIDI as well. So there you have it, the YC series. Thank you so much for watching this here on Full Compass, one of my favorite dealers in the U.S. out there in Madison, Wisconsin, a great place. Haven't been there in a while, but going back, anyway, you are in great hands with Full Compass. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to contact sales associate there. They will be more than happy to answer questions. If you have any other um, questions about this instrument, just go to yamahasynth.com. I have an entire article up there on, that's called Blake's Take, the YC series, that has lots of audio examples, really discusses the differences between the products, and gets deep into this instrument as well, so you want to check that out as well. Once again, this is Blake Angelos from Yamaha Corporation of America in the synthesizer department. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great one. Bye. We have a survey when you exit. Uh, if you could fill that out. And again, if you have any further questions whatsoever, um, go ahead and email me at jripp at fullcompass.com. I will gladly answer those questions. And if I have to step it up to, to Blake 
or Nate, I will do that. Uh, I also, thank you, Nate. Thank you, Blake. Thanks, everybody, for showing up today. Uh, we'll see you on the flip side with another full access webinar from Full Compass. Take care. Thank you.